Colleen, Rebel Stitcher, and as always, I'm joined by my handsome sidekick, Albus, my sexy boy. Um, this is floss tube number 89, and this is my spooktacular Halloween episode. I've got a ton of stuff to share with you, super fun stuff, um, so it's going to be a long one, so sit back, relax, hopefully you get a lot of good stitching in while I ramble. Um, I've got some pretty sh epic shop updates for you. I've got some new charts that I'm releasing and other fun stuff. And I also have my own personal stitching stuff, but I'm going to leave that to the end. So if you're just here for the chart releases and you want to bounce after that, that's fine. I won't know. So no harm, no foul. And if you want to stick around for the long haul, more power to you. So I think I'll go into the releases first, um, I'll kind of film a floss tube backwards here and um, cause that's the most exciting part, right? That's why you're here. Um, let's see, I have four new charts that I will be loading on my website, which is rebelstitcher.com while I'm waiting for this to upload on YouTube. So after I, get off of here, I will be doing my homework, um, updating the website. Because as a lot of people have mentioned on their floss tubes, YouTube has kind of been a butthead lately. Who knows? It's like a crapshoot. Sometimes it uploads first try, super easy. Sometimes it takes forever. So fingers crossed I get an easy time. Um, so I am going to jump in to my charts show you each one and go over them. I have notes over here in case I forget something. Um, so if I keep looking down, I apologize. Um, I just have a lot to remember. And as we all know, my brain doesn't function very well. So, okay, I have three charts. Hold on, I have a little basket on the side of my chair. So the first chart is called Perdita's Pumpkin Pies. And this is the model. Let me get a zoom in there for you. This chart, or this model, I should say, was stitched by my amazing friend Susie. Um, she's, uh, I think, Flostitute Susie is her Instagram name. Um, but this was stitched on 40 count grandpa's sleeve by X2 Design. Um, I, I'm trying to get up close so you can see it. I am totally here for, so it's this pumpkin headed woman and she's baking pumpkin pies. And these um, little pumpkins here are like her babies. They all have faces on them. And along here is a pie and a pumpkin baby, a pie and a pumpkin baby. I don't know what is wrong with me. It's quirky. It's weird. It's a little spooky without being like horror spooky, you know, but I'm totally here for pumpkin pie cannibalism. Um, I usually have grandpa's sleeve in the shop. Um, if you're looking to stitch it like this, the amazingly talented Jan Calvert, um, her Instagram is finished a stitch did all the finishing for me of all the models that I am showing you today. So a huge thank you to Jan. Um, I told her I had this idea. I bought these little, I think it was like a pack of three or four rolling pins off of Amazon. And cause I wanted to stick with the baking kind of theme. And I said, I want this to be a wall hanging and I wanted to hang from a rolling pin. And then I just added this little thing so it's easier to hang it. But this is what Jan came up with. And look at on the back, it's a really subtle pattern so it doesn't overwhelm things. Beautiful. Let me show you what the chart looks like. So this is, this is the chart. It's a full color chart and um, pretty easy. It's a mix of classic color works. There's one Gentle Arts and two DMC. So it's not a ton of colors, but there you go. Perdita's Pumpkin Pies. That's the first chart that I have that's new for my Halloween releases. 
And as you know, I felt like the pressure was on because I love Halloween. I stitch Halloween all the time. So um, hopefully these charts, you'll love stitching them. But this is my first one and I love it. So a huge that a huge thank you to Susie for model stitching and a huge thank you to Jan for finishing. So that's the first one. The second one is called Una's Urn. And this is what it looks like. Um, I was trying to do something like a little full pin cushion that didn't necessarily read Halloween until you looked a little bit closer. So this urn, but then there's skulls in it. Oh, bird just flew by the window. And then I've got this little pumpkin with the little white pumpkin with the face. I tried to make this look a little spooky and weathered looking and these flowers, I kind of wanted them to look like eyeballs. Um, so Susie again, model stitched this for me. It is on Dead Sea Scrolls by Seraphim Fabric, 40 count. And you know, it's, this could stay out all through autumn or fall. It's, um, I just lost my notes because it's not outwardly Halloween-y, you know, um, you don't even notice the skulls right away. And look at the amazing top job Jan did finishing this with the little trim. I mean, Jan is just impeccable. She does such an amazing job. I can't speak highly enough of her. She's one of the finishers at Keepsakes. Um, just amazing. So this, like I said, was on Seraphim fabric. This chart uses, where's the chart? Classic Color Works. And um, Classic Color Works. And I think there is one week's, I think. So hopefully, and again, this was on Seraphim's. Dead Sea Scrolls. I just wanted that grungy kind of look to it. Super fun. It's not a huge piece. It's perfect for a little pin cushion or in a dough bowl. Um, I really like this one. And then the last chart is called Before the Devil Knows. And it's based on a um, Irish, what are they called? I'm totally blanking now. What are they called? I've designed this. You'd think I'd know. An Irish proverb. Um, so let me show you this. So it says, may you arrive at heaven an hour before the devil knows you're dead. And there's so many Irish sayings, proverbs, whatever. And they are just a lot of times they just have a bit of a quirky sense of humor and I'm here for that. So this chart is mainly monochromatic. It's all the same color except the skeleton, I think is vanilla custard from Classic Color Works. Um, but you could pick anything. But I, since it's mainly monochromatic, I really, was being persnickety about finding the right floss. And I couldn't find anything that like matched what I had in my head. So I collaborated with Leanne from Forbidden Fiber Company and she custom dyed this floss. And I have it in the shop, it's available. Let me show you what it looks like. Hopefully it'll show, can you see that? It's like black and gray and purple all mixed in. It's called Devil Knows. This she dyed just for us, us, the royal we, um, just for me, for this chart. I have it in the shop under floss. To give you a heads up of how many skeins you might need, Susie is a very anal perfectionist stitcher, as you can tell from these stitches. 
This is 40 count rustic coffee by X Jew is the fabric it's on. She, it took her one skein to stitch all this and she had like this much left. I think she was playing thread chicken the entire way. So if you are not that frugal with your floss, I would recommend getting two uh, skeins if you're doing 40 count and then just base off of it from there how many you'd need. Um, because um, look at the back of this, the way Jan finished this. I love the, the trim she put on there. I mean, it matches this so well. So this is a graveyard scene with these cats, these little scaredy cats are like, Ow! and then bats. And again, I never do borders that meet up because that's just, as a stitcher, a lot of stress and nobody needs that. So these are just supposed to be fun fall Christmas stitching. I think I really like them all. I hope you guys do too. It's um, a little nerve wracking when like it's your favorite holiday and you gotta come up with some good stuff. So hopefully you like this. If, again, if you want to stitch it as is, the floss is in the shop, rebelstitcher.com under the floss category. So a huge thank you to Leanne of Forbidden Fiber Company for working with me and translating what I had in my mind to reality because she really hit the nail on the head. This is a freaking gorgeous color in real life. Unfortunately, things don't always show up, you know, in on camera, but it's stunning. It really is stunning. Um, so that's the third chart. And the last one, if you were in the um, Halloween mystery box, you got a heads up and you've already seen this chart. So everybody in that got this chart already. This is just a small little project. You can totally get this done and stitched and FFO'd in time for Halloween. It's, I guess I never put the title on the chart, but it's called Trick or Treat. Um, and this is what it looks like. I did do an unboxing and this is what the chart looks like. I did do an unboxing of the Halloween, um, Halloween box. Uh, the, if you go back an episode on floss tube, if you're interested, this was stitched with Jody fabric. This, everything you needed to stitch it came in this Halloween box. So you got the trim, you got the floss, you got the fabric. So Jody dyed this fabric, but honestly, if you could pick from stash, it's a small little piece. And this would be really a fun little stitch. The chart itself is charted in DMC, so it's super easy. Just pull from, and there's only one, two, three, four, five colors. Super, super easy and sweet. So this will be up on the website too for those of you who weren't in the Halloween box uh, club but wanted, you know, want to partake in the stitching, shall we say. Okay, so that's it on the charts. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Let me check my notes and make sure I didn't miss anything. I feel like I whizzed through them, probably because I'm nervous. Um, let's see. Okay, so since I'm talking about boxes, all of the Halloween boxes have shipped out. Everybody seems to be enjoying them. And um, when I say box, I say box with quotation marks because it's not te technically mailed in a box. It's mailed in a bag. Um, but unbagging or un <laughs> sounds really weird instead of unboxing so I'm just going with box so anyway the Halloween box came out everybody loved it I'm really happy um, I think I'm gonna do these mystery boxes on a seasonal basis so one a season yesterday I announced on Instagram that I'm doing a winter one and it's pretty much sold out I might have like one or 
to, oh, did I show you the chart for this? It's in my lap. I don't know if I did. But that's what the chart looks like for Devil Knows. I'm a hot mess. Um, okay, back to boxes. Okay, so I announced the <coughs> winter box. This is how it's going to work. <coughs> Genevieve of Jasmine Custom Bags is going to do the project bag again for me. If you like the project bag in the last one, wait till you see what she comes up for with this one. Um, it's going to be hand embroidered uh, on, with the embroidery machine and <coughs> on the front of it. And it is so cool. I mean, this is going to be an epic project bag. So there's that. Then Jody is going to do the fabric again. It's got everything you need to stitch the project will be included in the box. I've designed the chart. The chart is much bigger than the Halloween chart. The Halloween chart, I tried to make it so you could like finish it and FFO it in time for um, the holidays. And, you know, so I didn't want to make it too ambitious or not doable. So this one, I'm doing a bigger chart. So you're going to need bigger fabric and more floss. Jody's dyeing the fabric for us, thankfully. Um, <clears throat> And I've already designed the chart. I just have to like edit it and tweak it down a little bit, but we're pretty much there. I've got some other pretty epic goodies lined up to go with it. You're gonna get the floss. So because everything is a little bit bigger because the chart is bigger, the cost is gonna be a little bit more. It's gonna be $95 plus shipping. And it's pretty much sold out. There might be at the time I filmed this, I think I might have had like one or two empty spots that haven't been claimed. Um, so what I'm going to do is send out invoices for the mystery box for everybody that's on the list. I can only do 50 because Genevieve said it's not feasible for her to make more than 50 of these bags. Um, <clears throat> we don't want to burn her out and have her locked to her sewing machine like a sweatshop. So I'm capped off at 50. So what I'm gonna do is in a week or two, send invoices out to, oh, and you always get a choice between Ada or Linen. Not every count, it's either 16 count Ada or 32 count Linen. That's it, will you just tell me Ada or Linen? Um, <clears throat> so what you're gonna do is in a week or two, I'm gonna send invoices out. And at that point, I'm gonna ask for 50, percent deposit to save your spot and then if anybody who doesn't pay their invoice now if you if you reach out to me say I need more time to pay you know I've got a bunch of unexpected bills whatever I'm totally fine with that as long as you communicate with me um stitchy bills should not be something that stress you out and I could totally work with you I more just need the deposit to reserve it <clears throat> so because there's a lot of people clamoring to get these and if you're not gonna pay, I wanna give somebody a, an opportunity to get it that is willing to step up. So anybody who doesn't pay after like those deposit invoices go out, then I'll start pulling from the wait list. So even if you are gonna be on the wait list, there's still hope. So if you would like one, email me. My, my email will be in the description box down below cmatthewsfry at gmail.com. Email me, tell me your PayPal email and your fabric option, and I will put you on the wait list. And fingers crossed, you might get pulled. Um, you never know. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So that's what's going on with the winter boxes. Um, I've been working on that the last few days to finalize stuff with what's going in it and it seems like I'm pleased with what's going in. I think it's pretty epic. Hopefully you guys will be too. So let's see. The Cottage Garden Thread Bi-Monthly Club, the invoices went out. If you think you're in the club and you didn't get an invoice, reach out to me. I'm dyslexic and I have fat fingers so it has been known to happen that I make a typo or two. I'm not gonna show you the club mailing this time around because there's a lot of people that haven't gotten theirs yet. Like I just mailed out like five of them this morning. 
So I don't want to spoil that for anybody, but for the next round, I'll show it to you. I did also just get a big order in from Cottage Garden Threads, which restocked the floss that I carry in the shop. Um, I was out of a lot of things and, you know, since it comes from Australia, it takes a while to restock. So if you were looking for a particular color and it was out of stock, chances are it's back now. So go check that out. And I figured I would do a giveaway of a skein of Cottage Garden Threads because why not? So I was going to give away a skein of, this is called Sweetwater with my Jersey accent. Yes, I say water, not water. So Sweetwater, if you would like a skein of this, let's do something Halloween-y. Tell me your favorite Halloween candy and use the word candy in a sentence. So the code word is candy. You must be 18 or older. You must subscribe to this channel. And um, I will pick from those of you that use that word next episode and I will give a skein of this away. Super, super fun color and I thought it kind of had like a autumnal vibe to it. You see there? I think it would be a good one. So we'll give that away next episode. Next, yeah. Let's see, what else do we have to go on? Um... That's all the notes I wrote down, did I? Okay, so I guess I'll go into life updates and then haul and stitchy kindness. I guess that's that way that'll work. Okay, life updates. My kids go back to school September 5th. Nicole, my wife, has knee replacement surgery September 1st. So she has needed this knee replacement surgery forever. She played college basketball, not that she's tall, but um, she completely ruined her knees. And so <clears throat> she gets the first one in September and they're gonna do the second one in, November, in December. They kept telling her she's too young and finally she got a doctor to listen to her and she's getting the knee replacement. So she's getting it September 1st. So I'll be in the hospital with her September 1st while they're doing the surgery which is also the day you need to register for StitchCon. So I am hoping the hospital has good Wi-Fi and I can get on the list. Um, yeah, I am looking forward for my kids going back to school and having some peace and quiet in the house while they're gone. I'm a little nervous about what it's gonna be like for Nicole recovering from knee replacement, but we'll figure it out. Um, we just got back from a week in Beach Haven on Long Beach Island in New Jersey. It was heavenly. Um, we had perfect weather the entire week. It didn't rain once. It was sunny and warm. The water in the ocean was warm. It was just gorgeous. Long Beach Island is where I spent my summers as a kid. My mom worked in a school district, so she had summers off, and my great aunt had a house in Beach Haven, so we would go spend good chunks of time in Beach Haven over the summer growing up, and I just have so many great memories there. So this was like, my kids, have, Walker was there when he was like three, but he doesn't remember it. Edda has never been there. So since it's only like two hours away from where we are now, we decided we booked a rented a house for a week. It was literally on the beach. Um, we just walked over the dune and we were there. We had access through the dune. It was amazing. Um, Cause when you have kids and you gotta schlep all that stuff, you know? And we stayed with my friend Megan and her two boys. Um, we shared the house. So it was four kids, three adults. There's a lot of stuff to schlep, you know? So the beach was amazing. We loved it. Huge thank you to my wife, Nicole, for putting up with my nostalgia tour. You know, I was like, oh, we got to take the kids here. We got to do this with the kids. We got to take them to Uncle Will's for pancakes. We got to take them to Thundering Surf for, uh, you know, water slide thing. And, you know, we got to go to Country Kettle for fudge. And we got, you know, 
panzonis for good pizza and we did it all the kids loved it and it was really nice to kind of do those memory have those memories of what you did as a kid but with your kids you know what I mean it was really special um, when we are away sometimes we have a pet sitter stay with the dogs sometimes they go to a kennel this time we took them to a kennel called Fuzzy Butts and Albus came home skin and bones and Boris came home fat 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 so I think we can all put two and two together and figure out what happened Boris the fat bastard ate my boy's food and my poor boy I think was homesick and missed us and also was bullied a little bit and he didn't get a lot of food so I've been trying to give the sweet boy as much food as possible to fatten him back up but he's so skinny so skinny I gotta fatten him back up so anyway but the dogs are fine Albus is just you know he just is a pushover and you know let's oh you would like that food okay you take it okay that's enough life updates let's get into what I've been stitching since the last time I showed you and haul so I guess I should do stitching first right so when I came back from uh, Beach Haven or Long Beach Island I worked a little bit on Halloween Quaker by uh, Lila Studio I didn't do a ton honestly I worked on this motif and this cat like I said this is on murky with all the called for colors I really haven't done a ton on it but I am working on this it's toad I'm not gonna zoom in too much because it's totally screwed up like this cat is too low and I'm just gonna fudge it I'm just fudging it um I'm gonna make it work as Tim Gunn from Project Runway would say make it work and that's what I'm doing so you don't get a close-up on that the other thing I got a lot of stitching on is from Teresa Kogut's Silla Witches. Let's see where this is the picture from for this one. One second. I can feel it, but it won't come out. There we go. This. And Amy Sprinklestein Stitches and I are hosting a stitch along on this one. Um, it's hashtag Silla Witches Sale. I'll put in the little drop down. So if you're stitching this and you want to share your progress with us, that would be fun to stitch along. And this, I got a page finish and a little more while I was out of, at the beach. So look at all that progress I got done. It looks really good on camera. This is stitched on Pumpkin Pie by Be Stitch Me. And let's see, the black is witching hour and the green is a green silk that came in a Halloween box a year or two ago from Be Stitch Me. And let's see, the page break is like here down. So that's one whole page and then I'm starting on the other. I this was a great project to bring to the beach because I basically it's monochromatic there are little green highlights here or there but I didn't have to keep looking back and seeing and switching colors it was pretty easy and mindless stitching so this was perfect beach stitching so I did get that done that progress done anyway I got a page finish which felt good and speaking of finishes, I finished something when I first got there. I finished sweeping cobwebs by the Prairie Schooler. And here's my finish. I think this looks so good. Um, this, I hear a dog out in the next room chewing on something. I'll be right back. <laughs> 